Today on Between the Lines, tapping into your body's incredible power in order to live a more fulfilling life with Steve Siskold. Welcome, I'm Barry Kibrick. Steve is a renowned life coach who has helped people throughout the world overcome issues that others couldn't tackle. With his book, Whole Body Intelligence, he shows us how to get out of our heads and into our bodies to achieve greater wisdom and confidence at the deepest of levels. I'm a writer today because I was a reader when I was 11 years old. And it was- You do, need to, need, you do not need to prove your state of happiness to anybody. Most of these speeches were as much as a month in preparation. The characters, the heroes in this book are seekers of truth. In, in a story that, that involved a lot of corruption. I don't get a chance to really talk about what's real. Oh. And that is the first thing to do. Steve, welcome back to Between the Lines. I remember, it seems like yesterday, but it was a <laughs> while ago, but again, the book touches people in a certain way, and I, I'm so glad to be able to share the experience with you. Thank you, I'm honored to be here again, and thankful. This is great. Well, Thank it's my you. pleasure. It's called Whole Body Intelligence because it does spin on its head the old theory that the mind rules the body. And what we're doing here, I'm going to actually just use your words so we can start it off that way. Mm -hmm. Your body is always ready to give you the most reliable information, indicate the best way to go, and reveal the best decisions to make. Now, as we talked even from your last book, you know this is something I've always felt in simpatico with. So I really want to share and bring your wisdom out with this because we always think it's the mind controlling the body and we don't realize how often the body is the one that's telling us first what we should be doing. Absolutely. Well, our mind is often, in fact, most of the time in the future and the past. Yet our body's been there since day one. Our body's holding on to a lot of information. So when we're not engaged, when we're not in the moment, the first thing I think of is, well, my mind's gonna take me all over the place. But one thing I can rely on is to just feel and notice, and that brings me right into the moment, Barry, and then I can make a better decision. Uh, it might give me some information that I'm not thinking about, and it just has worked for me, and it's working for a lot of others right now, too. Well, and you know, I, I, I've always felt, and I think I might have even gotten this from your first book as well as from here, but I've always believed that, you know, our, our mind, when we, and when we talk about our mind, we're really talking about our frontal lobe because the lizard brain has been there as long as the body has, but the frontal lobe where all of the thoughts and where all of these things occur, that's a relatively new development, quote, in the biological chain, link chain, you might say. Right. But yet our body's cells have been there since the original starburst. So they have, <laughs> I like am that. I right? They have I been there that. from the original starburst. So they possess, simply by their existence, a longer time of existence, therefore, by nature, more wisdom. Absolutely, well, I just feel like we've gotten far away from the body, in fact, farther than ever. You know, we used to be intrasomatic, we used to feel, we used to smell. Now, this is what we're doing, Barry. We're looking down at the screen. We have no idea we're pulling our back, back muscles up. We're um, looking outside, so we're extrasomatic. We've really become out of the body. On top of that, how many times do we feel something and someone said, oh, that's not true, or you don't know what you feel. I'll give you some stories as we go along. And then what happened is we've lost trust and we're so virtual and we're thinking so much about other things that really my mission or my goal here is to get people to go, hey, you have a body, a lot of your issues, problems, decision-making, it's right here. I call it your personal Google. It, get that information here instead of always looking out here. And, and because we forget that, and we, we, we literally, as you say, we, we ignore the physical. And it's dying to tell us what <laughs> we need to be doing. But we think, oh, wait a minute, I can figure this thing out. I'll think this thing through. <laughs> I know it's my mind. I'll take this. It's my emotions gone amok, whatever it might be. But if you listen to that signal, and like you said, pay a true belief that it is a signal, what a difference it makes. Well, you know, that's a great point. And unfortunately, none of us want to feel uncomfortable. Sometimes a signal can be uncomfortable. So if it's uncomfortable or it's 
like nagging at us, but our mind's like, oh, but I want to go on that. I want to invest in that. I want to I want to ask that person. And we know our body's screaming, so we ignore it. And also, sometimes it's uncomfortable and we don't want to go through it. So what I say to people is kind of like the laundry. You know, you put something in the laundry and you just leave it there. It kind of gets old and funky. But if you really go through the whole cycle, you get to the place where it's dry and, and feels good. It's the same thing. It, it takes that that commitment. I've always, in this book, in fact, I ask people to buy in. Buy in that you're going to do this loop back to your body and actually go through that feeling because that feeling might not be comfortable all the time. But once we get through that feeling, well, we get to somewhere else. That's the, that is the real problem because when we notice, unfortunately, the physical, it's usually some form of a pain. Am I right? We don't pay attention to it unless all of a sudden your stomach is now in a knot or your, you know, your shoulders, or you got a kink, or you, and so that's a signal, but we're, you know, it's annoying. We don't want to listen to that in a certain sense, but that's telling you, even though you're not even <laughs> conscious, something's bothering you. Pay attention to it. It's telling, it's yelling at you even, <laughs> which I think is why we, we, we who wants to be yelled at? Exactly. <laughs> and, and we're so much about pleasure and pain. All we want is pleasure. We don't want to feel the pain. So to feel something, for instance, today very relaxed, but there are times, and I'm, I love to speak, I love to get out there, but there are times where I'm about to go on a big stage or something, uh, and all of a sudden, my mind's excited, but my body inside is starting to feel something. And it'll bring me back to things in my past where maybe I left my neighborhood for the first time and I got beat up, or maybe something happened and I got rejected. And my body will start to remember that. See, it's kind of like I'm in a submarine. My body doesn't know what's going on out here. So I have to be the periscope. I have to actually say to my body, it's okay. We're not five years old. We're not eight years old. We're right here now. Ah, then my body relaxes. But the body has those memories that start to send those uncomfortable feelings and we do everything we can, Barry, to numb it. And what we're doing is we're escaping this amazing whole body intelligence. And in fact, you, you go so far as let the brain take its cues <laughs> from the body, not the other way around. Let your mind, let your emotions take its cues from what's going on uh, oftentimes in your gut literally the gut feeling which used to be something we relied on but in your your gut or in it could be in your joints it could be wherever there's what i call weak links in in the body and we <laughs> all true. know what those are they're usually in in the uh, stomach area or in the joint area or in the bursas or in all the parts of the body <laughs> rarely the muscles you know what i mean but yeah. in those weaker points they're the first to they're the canary in the coal mine so mm, to speak that's excellent well you know I think it's a, a really a retraining because everywhere we are today is about the mind. It's virtual, it's external, like I say, it's screens, it's getting information from out here. So that really takes a whole retraining. It's really like the brain. You know, if the brain is continuously thinking something or going in one direction, it starts to get used to it. It's a habit. It's an emotional addiction, really. So now, now I'm asking people, how about rewiring all of that? and actually going here first. That's a whole retraining. It's a brand new habit for people, Barry. Also, just as you talked about that, when you're too much into your mind, that's when you begin to have all those spiraling, depressive kinds of notions. That's when you're thinking of all the things I wish I did, I could have done, I should have done. Exactly. When you say when that happens, what we tend to do is go further into our mind to try to <laughs> dig ourselves. It's sort of like once, when you're in a hole, stop digging, but you don't, <laughs> right? You're in your mind, you stay in your mind, you're trying to use your mind to get out of the hole you're digging in your mind, uh -huh. and you say just get out of your mind, go right back. <sighs> To the we, body. We're, we make up so many stories, and so many of those stories are based on the past. So our mind has this experience, and then somebody could do something, it triggers the body. That feeling in the body, that trigger, that feeling, see those thoughts create feelings, and then the feeling starts to create a sensation, but we don't want to feel it. So we ignore that, and then we go back up to this false thinking and these stories that might not have anything to do with the moment. And then that trigger gets us to think back to those times where we were either hurt, abandoned, shamed, and then we make up a whole scenario. I do it too, we all do it. The difference is I unplug, I, I call it intervention. 
which is a different kind of term for this work, but I use that. I go intervene, unplug, get up and move. Movement opens the neural nets, starts to get the brain thinking. Do anything but freeze and think. Do an intervention, do something. Well, in fact, you, Physical. you, you even say, because this is th the comment you'll hear from everyone, especially if someone is under stress, you say, it's not all in your head. Stop <laughs> thinking of that. Every thought you have does have this physiological connection. Absolutely. So when, when people say, well, it's all in your head, well, <laughs> yes, it's in my head because I'm not getting out of my head. And in a sense, you've made a choice, even if it's unconscious, and that's why I mean every moment is a choice. So for instance, in the moment, you could say something to me, and I could be triggered and think and make up a whole story I could put a wall between us. I could make up a story about you. You might remind me of my uncle, blah, blah, blah. Instead, body first. Bring it back into the body and go, what am I feeling, Steve? What, when Barry asked you that question, what did you notice? So it's really a whole body experience, a different way of life, for sure, uh, other than what I might imagine up here and make up. Now, I forgot the term you used before, but in the book you use another one I think very similar to it. You call it the rebooting technique. Yes. And, and that is also that, you know, it's, 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 you call it de-stressing on demand, in on fact, demand. and and what it that. is is it's a it's a way to direct the stress response and well basically like you said it's it the first thing you got to do is unplug that's the first thing you have to do and you that have to is unplug difficult oh. do you know I have a client wow who's a pretty big executive the worst part of his day is the shower in the morning. Because he's unplugged, he has separation anxiety. Oh, he has anxiety from being unplugged. Ten minutes. Oh my gosh. What might I have missed? Who might be contacting me? Barry, we're way too plugged in. You know, you probably saw this too. My parents, they went to work, they came home. The evening was about the family. It's not like that anymore. We're plugged in. And there's, you know, I do a lot of work in the Silicon Valley and there's tremendous competition of I've only been plugged in 14 hours, but my counterpart might be still working. So to take that 10 minute shower, to take that moment and just have dinner with your family, there's a mega separation anxiety going on for us, a new stress. Where's my machine? What might I be not connecting? What did I miss? Whew. That unplug, step one of the rebooting is the most difficult for people to say, people have said to me, well, I lose my edge. Can I take 10 minutes? I go, you have to. Barry, what I've been teaching is it's not just work-life balance. It's mind-body balance. Work-life balance, oh, I took a week vacation, so what? You still stayed on your phone, you still thought about too much. But mind-body balance, to actually unplug twice a day in that rebooting, unplug and go into the body, whew, we get replenished, we get back in touch with who we are, and we don't need that three o'clock coffee and that five o'clock coffee. We're, we're actually re-energizing ourselves, 10, 15 minutes a day. You then tell us that even if we don't, if we pay attention to this, you say, I'm always amazed that life knows where it's taking us even if we don't. So in a sense, if we only paid attention to that, we would naturally unplug because we would be aware that that's what the universe is telling us, that's where the tension is coming from. We need to listen more to that universe. We, we do, Barry, but you know, so many of us, I have to tell you a quick story. I was at the hot springs. I like to, I tell people I write my books underwater. <laughs> and they always say, ah, oh, come on, you have a tablet that writes underwater? I go, no, something happens to my brain and my body that when I get underwater, I don't care if it's a shower, or a hot tub, or a swimming pool, or the ocean, I get relaxed and I get really creative. So I go to these hot springs when I write and I'm laying there very happy and I look around, I see this beautiful little girl playing on the steps, just having the best time. She hears a little voice that I heard, honey, I've got lemonade for you. And it's her mom bringing over a cup of cucumber water. I'm sorry, Barry, I love cucumber water, but it's not lemonade. It's not <laughs> lemons, it's not sugar, it's not honey, come on, it's cucumber water. So she brings it over and I watch this little girl who was so happy playing in the water and she takes a sip. Oh. Mom felt really disappointed because mom, you know, I understand that she had kind motives. Mom wanted her to be happy. So she says, come on, try it again, honey. Try it again, honey. It's really good. Eventually I watched the little girl do this, Barry. Yeah, it tastes like lemonade. Mom walks away and the kid's down here. Oh. This is what happens. We're discouraged to feel. We're told, no, it's not hot when we're hot. 
And, and this little girl, in my experience, is gonna, rem is gonna have this feeling, maybe I don't know what I feel. Maybe what I feel is wrong. So it's not just a matter of unplugging, it's a matter of can we really trust what we feel when pay, perhaps through the years people have told us, you don't know what you feel because of their own inconvenience. It's not hot in here, it really is sweltering for the little kid, but mom wants to get out of the grocery store, so she says, leave your coat on. That teaches us at an early age, I don't know what I feel. So we start to not trust. One of the solutions to everything is a do-over is the first <laughs> step toward creating a new neural pathway. I am a major believer in the do-over. In fact, when we were kids growing up, we actually named the do-over a name. We called it a Larry. I don't remember exactly why. We called it Larry's. That means a do-over. It, it was just like that. We gave it, it a name. Chance. It, 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 you got another chance. You got another chance. And you, all you had to do was call it. You didn't have to do anything else. You just had to say, Group I, agreement. Uh, exactly, <laughs> I want a Larry. All right, we'll go give, throw the ball one more time. I love but that. a do-over, yeah. Because that is, it's almost what the, the, the nation is even founded on, is a chance to start exactly. over. Well, imagine a do-over for somebody that's been abandoned or betrayed in relationship. They go on a first date and their body language, you know, they're telling people, oh, I'm really open to having a great relationship and their arms are covering their heart. They're not even aware that their body's giving these signals. But what's happened is they've already brought with them in their mind I'm gonna get betrayed, I'm gonna get abandoned again, I'm gonna get hurt, I'm gonna lose the deal. So as long as they bring that in, they don't have a chance to do a do-over. But if they listen to the body and they express that unresolved feeling, they actually get to say something, feel something different. It, just like the example I used. Sure, the first time I left my neighborhood, it wasn't safe. And it'll come up in my body as if like this TV studio isn't safe. But I get a chance to do a do-over. I get to breathe and go, Actually, I can go into new places and be safe. That's a do-over. Basically, I had another chance. Two things you bring up, viral and vital beliefs. A viral beliefs are falsehoods. They're distortions whose power lives in the past, but you admit they sure do feel real. A vital belief, though, is a benefit to your body and mind. It supports your goals and it enriches your relationships and your mission through this book is to identify and change those viral beliefs which mostly rest up here and get into the vital beliefs which mostly rest within the whole body. I'm really glad you brought that up because as we talked earlier I think one of my niches is I was in business and sales. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a doctor, even though I took some courses and became trained in body-centered somatic therapy. So really my goal is to help people look at how are those beliefs affecting your life? That's really a lot of my work. It can be as simple, Barry, as someone being, you know, I, I learned a new term this year. I went down Silicon Valley, I've been coaching a lot of people, and they said, oh, you're an executive presence coach. And I went, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, I'm an executive presence coach. What they meant was somebody's a manager, and they're doing a great job, and all of a sudden they're, they're promoted to vice president, and all of a sudden something shifts. And they can't figure it out. And I find it in the body that something happened in the past that caught that belief. So for instance, I'm working with an exec and finding out why are you not going to that next level comfortably. Sure enough, the mind couldn't find it, but I found it in his body, Barry, really simply. What happened was when somebody gave him an acknowledgement, when he had to lead, something happened in his body and it just went back to childhood. You know, father saying, oh, you think you're a big shot? And he would back up and I said, every time I give you a compliment, so I called his group in and I said, do me a favor, just give your new boss as many compliments as you can. And the more they did it, he backed up and actually hit the wall behind him. He backed up about three feet. What happened is the viral belief is if I lead people, if I think I'm too big of a head, somebody's gonna hurt me because that's what happened to him over and over and over and over as a kid. 30 years later, he takes it into the company. We got to look at that viral belief and then we worked on embodying in the body a vital belief that I can actually lead, I can actually compliment myself and look at my skills and be safe and be happy. But, whew. 
That's a you, big move. It is, but you admit the tricky part is we can't always put our finger on them. And I guess that's what makes us human, that we can't really always identify these things. That is, that does take practice. It takes practice, and you know, the, I guess the, the biggest part of my work is when I say to people, I, and this is how I really got started, I say to people, what, what do you want in your life? What, what is it? And if you watch the body, Barry, there's always a response. The body never lies. So I'll say, they'll say they want to have a great relationship, and they'll grip. Or they'll say, I want to take my uh, team and, and make them the most, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> success. I go, you're choking on the word successful. Let's look at that. So basically, in the book and in my work, I want people to l take this body into consideration. When you say you want something, when you want better health, you want a new relationship, you want to be more successful, watch what your body does. Because it's those obstacles, those viral beliefs, like viruses, they live there, that just got triggered. And if you don't watch it, those viral beliefs will get you to ruin that relationship, to get fired, to not get to the next promotion. But if you find them in your body, it might be in your belly, as you said earlier, it might be anywhere, and you actually feel them and express what you didn't get to express, and you get that out, then you're making space for the vital belief, I can be healthy and successful. I can lead my group. And it might take a day or a week or a month till your body believes it, but once it does, I believe that that's the real law of attraction. I don't think it's just here. I think it's when I walk in a room and I'm embodying that I will get this gig. Like for instance, I went to this big Silicon Valley uh, networking. I have to admit, driving down there, I thought, what am I doing? Why am I going down there? You know, the mind. I got down there and I handed them the book and this person said, oh, I really like this, you know, this, this uh, stress. The vital belief was, I'm gonna speak here one day. I'm actually speaking there next week because I embodied that I could keynote at your event. But if there was any part of my body that was talking to you that didn't believe that, not here, but here, I have a feeling I wouldn't have been hired. Do you see the difference? Here, I know it, but if, if I don't show it here, my billboard's saying, I'm not the guy. Well, you know, I know we're getting close to out of time, but I'm, if I have to, I'm gonna cut some other stuff because I wanna cover two very important things. Two more things I want to make sure we get into, Steve, and that is resilience. Mm. As you say, it applies to every aspect of your life. Resilience. And if we, it's, it's one of the first things we don't turn to is that realization that, hey, listen, and it's, it's attached to do-over in a certain way because you, resilience means that, hey, I messed up here, but I can do it over I can and bounce start back. here. I can come I back. I can bounce back. Resilience. That's a key. It's a key, and that's why in this book I have a 30-day plan, I have the rebooting technique twice a day. So I wanted to give people tips where they could actually build a resilience. So it's not just a matter of can I bounce back, but it's a matter of if I'm doing twice a day body-mind connection, actually taking steps to have my body and my mind talk, and I'm taking like the 30-day plan is focusing each day on another aspect of my body, then what's gonna happen is the next time something happens, I'm not gonna have to think about being resilient. I'm gonna naturally be able to go, ah, I can come back from that. I can make a better decision. That's my form of resilience. Be able to bounce back in a natural, organic way because you've developed new habits in your mind and body. And here's the keynote, I, and, I, and I start it three times, purpose. Purpose, you say, ties everything together. Bring purpose into everything you do. I believe that's really important. You know, without a purpose, we're not inspired. I think purpose is related to resilience, that we can give up, but somehow, and again, Barry, not in the mind, not purpose in the mind, but purpose in the body, so that I can body like you do. You embody exactly what you do. There's no part of you that I've ever seen watching many of your shows that doesn't show this man embodies his role. He embodies his career. Thank you. I do too. And as a result, if I don't embody something, I'll get a different result. And how does that work? Purpose. And I know you know that because knowing that purpose, even if I'm down, even if I feel defeated, even if I'm concerned about being rejected by a few publishers, I have a purpose that I can feel in my gut that I want to get this book out there. And sure enough, that's what it takes. Steve, I'm going to end on these words to stay resilient and 
on purpose. You must be engaged with your whole body and your beliefs so you can stay in touch with what's really going on and not sabotage your progress. Thank you, Steve, for keeping us on purpose. Thank you, Barry. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my pleasure, and thank you guys for joining us. Now, before Steve leaves, I'd like to leave you with these few more words from Whole Body Intelligence. Your body is always doing its thing whether you choose to listen to it or not. What's miraculous about us as human beings is that we have the ability to make a choice in every moment. I'm Barry Kibrick. Between all the choices, listen to your body and you will remain resilient and be on purpose. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you, Barry. My Appreciate pleasure. it. Closed captioning for Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible by your generous contributions to KLCS Education Foundation. Thank you for your support. To connect with Barry, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Barry Kibrick. And to contact Barry directly, watch past episodes of Between the Lines, and read his blog, visit us at barrykibrick.com. You have a body, a lot of your issues, problems, decision making, it's right here. I call it your personal Google. On the next episode of Between the Lines, tapping into your body's incredible power in order to live a more fulfilling life with Steve Sisko. With his book, Whole Body Intelligence, he shows us how to get out of our heads and into our bodies to achieve greater wisdom and confidence.